Hello, we just finished our census unit and I want to go through some review. One, it may help you with the quiz, but two, also just to make sure you understand some of our key concepts. So let's get started. All right, the first topic we covered in this unit was eyes. So I'm going to talk about protection. Remember, eyes are designed to detect light and work with our brain to help us interpret vision, interpret what we see. Okay, so super important, they need some protection. We have eyebrows, we have eyelashes, we have eyelids. Those all serve a layer of protection. And then we have tears. But tears are not simply just water. And they have actually three main components. So one component comes from lacrimal glands. Where are lacrimal glands? Right here on the superior lateral part of your eye. And they produce the watery part of tears that you normally would think of as tears. Okay. But then we have the conjunctiva, which is a thin, clear membrane that um, covers the sclera, the white part of your eye. And it has glands that produce mucus. So there's that mucusy um, layer or part of tears. And then we have the oily layer or part. And that's produced by, between your eyelashes, you have these tarsal glands or sebaceous glands. And they produce an oily part. So tears are really made up of three components. Um, a mucus layer, an oil layer, and a watery layer. And produced by three different glands. The lacrimal glands, the conjunctiva, and then the tarsal glands. So here are the parts of the eye. I'm gonna quickly run through them. So the cornea, that's the clear covering on the outside of the eye. The iris, that's the colored part of your eye when you say what color eyes you have. And the iris controls the size of the pupil, either makes the pupil smaller or larger, depending how much light is available. And then we have the aqueous humor, and that is um, a watery-like fluid that fills the area between the cornea and the lens, helps give the eye a little bit of its shape, also provides nutrients. So then we have the lens, um, which is the part of the eye that focuses light on the retina. And the lens is held in place by the ciliary body. The ciliary body can also stretch out the lens or, um, make it fatter in the middle and fatter in the middle would be to see something close up and then we have the vitreous humor well, that's a gel like fluid in the center of the eye and when you did the cow eye dissections that's what you would see is that like fluidy kind of stuff when you cut the eye in half the sclera that's the white part of the eye the choroid is a thin layer um, between the uh, sclera and the retina and it serves to provide blood flow um, to provide nutrients for all the parts of the eye the optic nerve is going to go to the occipital lobe of the brain, help us interpret vision. But there's this area right here. So let's cover the retina first. The retina is this thin layer that lines the inside of the eye back here. And it contains rods to help us see in dim light, a lot of those. And then cones that help us see in detail and color. And red, green, and blue are those colors. Well, all of the cells of the retina converge at this one place to form uh, the optic nerve. And that space, that spot where the optic nerve connects to the retina, is called the blind spot because there's no photoreceptor cells there. So we literally can't see in that one spot, no matter if light falls there or not. Here's what happens in two types of vision. Myopia, I always remember I can see my stuff clear, so you're nearsighted. Hyperopia, you're farsighted. In both, you can see the image does not get focused on the retina, so the image is going to end up being blurry. So with myopia, you correct it with concave lenses, and hyperopia, you can correct it with convex lenses. Here's a question that a lot of people got wrong, it had to do with the um, molar liar illusion. Um, you can see that the lines appear different lengths, but clearly when they're um, highlighted in red, you can see they are the same length. Why do they appear different lengths? Because of the arrows. So when the arrows point in toward the line, it gives the illusion that the line is longer. Uh, then we did a cow eye dissection. Okay, so here you can see the cow eye as it comes out. Here um, you can see a couple of the parts of the eye after it's been cut in half. Here it is almost right after it's just been cut in half. So I'm going to focus on a couple questions. The tapetum lucidum, um, and it should be right here. It's this iridescent looking structure right here. It's not in our eyes. It's in cow eyes and cat eyes. Anyone where you shine light and their eyes sort of glow, 
um, and that helps them see better at night. Okay, and then the part that focuses the light on the retina, okay, that's going to be the lens. Okay, what are the other parts you can see here? Now, first, this is what a lens would look like if it weren't so cloudy. Uh, you can see it enlarges um, the text underneath. So the cornea, the clear covering, you can see parts of the sclera here. This uh, being the iris with the pupil in the center. Here we have the retina, the choroid, and the sclera. So this thin, light-colored structure, that again is the retina that allows us to be able to process light because it has the photoreceptor cells. I'm going to talk a little bit about optical illusions, right? Our brain sort of gets tricked. We perceive things differently than they actually are. So first, if you look at that moving GIF, you can see um, those eyes appear to follow you as you move around. But as you move around to the back, you can see it is not something that moves. It's just the way that it is put. So our brain is sort of trained to see faces. So um, Unfortunately, we get tricked in this case, um, and the, that is actually not a moving structure. It's just the design of how it's cut and held together. This is a version of wife and mother-in-law, where you can either see a younger woman looking back or an older woman profile view. Uh, and this one sort of always freaks me out, okay? Um, you can either see someone looking straight at you and like seeing half of their face, but cut at a strange angle, or seeing a profile view of someone. Okay, if you just Google 142 optical illusions, you can go to a site that has literally 142 optical illusions. So interesting to go through them. It also provides explanation about the illusions. Okay, the Ames room. Okay, so you can see how those people appear that they're growing in size as they move through the room. Now we know logically that's not possible. It's because of the structure of the room. So normally our brain thinks that rooms should be square or rectangular. An Ames room, though, has an area in the back where it goes um, back to a corner. And our brain has a hard time processing that because it's like rooms are supposed to be square and rectangle, not have this weird angled corner in the back. So the people who are standing um, in that corner appear like they're smaller, okay? Um, or larger, depending where they are. Okay, so again, it's how we get tricked. Spinning dancer. This one has been the bane of my existence as far as illusions go. I haven't been able to make her flip. Okay, she can either turn clockwise or she can turn counterclockwise. And I have always only been able to see her going clockwise until I found this slow version. And for some reason with this slow version, I was able to stare at her feet and then make her turn and switch and go in the opposite direction. And after I could do that, I look at this one um, that's moving a little faster. And sometimes, I sometimes have to blink and look away, but look back, and there we go. I just made her flip into the opposite direction. This also helped me. Okay, so you can see um, highlighting the arms and legs um, allows you to gain some perspective. And if you watch, you can have the same. Um, dancer, um, a flip and go into an opposite direction um, just based on where your perspective of her um, silhouette is. There are auditory illusions. So right here uh, in the video, she's making the same sound, ba. But this looks like ba, you hear ba, but when you make this ta, ah, even though the word said ba, you hear fa. Cover your eyes, you hear ba. Look at the picture, you see, you hear fa. Strange. Uh, this one is that some people are able to hear a sound when that lands on the ground. There is no sound, I promise. It's an auditory illusion. All right, reaction time. So it's uh, the time between a stimulus, something that happens in the environment, and a response, so our action or movement. So it can be affected by a lot of things, like how old we are, if we're distracted, if we're tired, um, if we have had alcohol or other drugs, what is our physical fitness? And why is reaction time important for like driving and playing sports and playing games, uh, reacting to emergencies, and even something as simple as having a conversation. So in this activity, um, this, the appearance of this yellow shape was the stimulus, and then your response was to click on it. 
Okay, a lot of people got that question. All right, taste, five main tastes, not 10, five. Okay, five main tastes uh, is not the only location for those taste buds, but it's where they're concentrated. So you have sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and then umami, okay? 80% um, of our taste actually comes from smell. So there's some truth to holding your nose while you eat something so you don't taste it as much. Also why when you have a stuffy nose, things don't taste as good, okay? Umami is the one that has the most receptors. Bitter tends to be at the back, bitter back, because a lot of poisons have a bitter taste, okay? Smell, this is probably one of my favorite senses because there's the olfactory bulb, which is the receptors are um, high up in your nasal cavity. And there's the olfactory bulb, which is very close to two important structures, the hippocampus and the amygdala. The hippocampus for memory and the amygdala for emotion. So smells can make you feel some type of way. Okay, they can trigger an emotion. They can um, trigger a memory. So iodine might make you feel terrible because it reminds you of a hospital. I personally love the smell of just blown out candles. I know, weird, right? Because it reminds me of birthdays. How cool is that? Okay, hearing, all right? So hearing starts with the pinna. The outer ear is going to collect sound vibrations. Yes, sound is caused by vibration. How do you know? Put your hands on a speaker. You'll feel it. Put your hand right here as you're talking. You'll feel the vibrations. The vibrations are going to go down the ear canal, and then they're going to bang into the eardrum. The eardrum is going to vibrate, boing, and then it's going to send those vibrations to the malleus, to the incus, to the stapes, those three little ossicles, the bones in the middle ear, and they're going to vibrate. And then the the stapes, which is the last one in the series, is going to cause the cochlea to vibrate. And the cochlea is filled with fluid, so that fluid is going to vibrate. And then there's these little hair cells in the cochlea that are going to get triggered by the vibration and turn that vibration into an electrical stimulus and send it on the auditory nerve to be processed in our brain. So cool. And then we have also these semicircular canals, which help us with balance and knowing how our head is oriented. It's also why if you spin too much, you get dizzy because the fluid in those semicircular canals and the crystals, they move uh, as you're spinning. And then as soon as you stop, they don't stop moving quite yet. So it gives you the illusion that you're still moving. And the eustachian tube, it helps drain mucus from the middle ear. It also helps to equalize pressure. So it's why when you're driving in a hilly or mountainous area or flying in a plane, you might feel that clogged feeling of your ears. It's because that eustachian tube gets blocked or closed and it gives that funny feeling. And so what helps is if you chew or swallow or drink something um, and it can help open up that eustachian tube so that the pressure gets equalized again and things will sound normal. All right, so besides hearing, ears function to maintain posture? No, 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 no. Balance, equilibrium, yes. Posture? No. And then the only other system that can respond to and recognize as quickly as the immune system is smell. Smell is amazing. And there you have it. There's a quick overview of senses. Hope you learned something new or at least reviewed something in a fun way.